The Florida Department of Transportation, FDOT, District 5, welcomes you to the public information meeting for Interstate 75, or I-75, improvements from south of State Road 44 to State Road 326. Good evening and welcome to the I-75 Improvements Public Meeting. My name is Stephen Buck and I am the FDOT District 5 Project Development Administrator. We thank you for joining us today. During the meeting, we will present information on the department's plan improvements to the I-75 corridor. Your feedback is important. And during the presentation, we will provide multiple ways for you to submit your questions and comments to us about the project. Questions will be responded to in writing after the meeting. All questions and comments will be part of the public meeting record. I will now turn it over to the project team to begin the presentation. Thank you. Meeting information is being provided in multiple ways to allow the community to receive information about the project and provide input. This meeting is being conducted in person, virtually through GoToWebinar and over the phone. For those listening to the meeting over the phone, the presentation is available on the project's web pages at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 452074-1 and www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 452074-2. This public meeting was advertised and is being conducted in accordance with state and federal requirements, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Melissa McKinney, District 5 Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, MS 501, DeLand, Florida, 32720-6834, by phone at 386-943-5077, or email melissa.mckinney at dot.state.fl.us. That's M-E-L-I-S-S-A -S dot M-C-K-I-N-N-E-Y at D-O-T dot S-T-A-T-E dot F-L dot U-S. You may also contact Stefan Kulikowski, State Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 605 Suwanee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399-0450 by phone at 850-414-4742 or email at stefan.kulikowski at dot.state.fl.us. That's s-t-e-f-a-n dot k-u-l-a-k-o-w-s-k-i at dot.state.fl.us. This information is shown on a sign at the in-person location, on the project websites, and in the meeting notifications. All inquiries will be handled according to FDOT procedure and in a prompt and courteous manner. The public meeting was advertised in the Florida Administrative Register, on FDOT's public notices website, the project webpages, and local newspapers. In addition, elected and appointed officials, government agencies, adjacent property owners, and interested individuals were notified about this public meeting. Meeting information was also hand-delivered and shared on social media. The environmental review, consultation, and other actions required by applicable federal environmental laws for this project are being or have been carried out by FDOT pursuant to 23 U.S.C. 327 and a Memorandum of Understanding dated May 26, 2022 and executed by the Federal Highway Administration and FDOT. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to explain the need for improvements and the study process, introduce the proposed I-75 improvements, and obtain the community's feedback about the proposed improvements. FDOT recently prepared an interstate master plan for I-75 to address the corridor's existing and future transportation needs. 
The limits of the master plan extend along I-75 from Florida's Turnpike in Sumter County to Marion County, Alachua County line and include the associated interchanges. The master plan identified near-term improvements referred to as Phase 1, subsequent interchange improvements referred to as Phase 2, and long-term improvements referred to as Phase 3. The master plan also includes an implementation plan which provides a roadmap for how the improvements can be implemented over three time horizons or phases as funding and priorities allow. The proposed improvements that will be presented at tonight's public meeting are the master plan recommended phase one short term improvements. These improvements are anticipated to provide benefits to the roadway users for the next 15 to 20 years. The master plan recommended phase two and phase three long-term improvements will continue to be evaluated in future studies. The recommended master plan near-term improvements advanced earlier this year to a series of Project Development and Environment, or PD&E, studies and are the subject of this presentation and meeting. The near-term I-75 improvements are currently being evaluated under two separate PD&E studies. I-75 South begins south of State Road 44 and ends at State Road 200. I-75 North begins at State Road 200 and ends at State Road 326. The PD&Es are the second step of a state-required project development process used to evaluate the potential social, natural, and physical impacts associated with a planned transportation improvement project. The objective of the PD&E studies is to comply with the National Environmental Policy Act, or NEPA, and is used to support decisions concerning if, where, and what improvements should be built to address transportation needs. FDOT was able to advance the design for this project, which is currently underway. Looking ahead, the right-of-way and construction phases are also funded. The need for improvements on I-75 has been well documented over the years through various studies and initiatives. Improvements are needed in the short term to address travel delays resulting from traffic incidents and seasonal traffic, and in the long term to address congestion resulting from growth in population, visitor traffic, and freight activity. Improvements are needed in the near term to reduce the frequency and severity of incidents on I-75. Today, I-75 experiences a total closure once every nine days, and at least one lane is closed every 13 hours for an average period of three hours due to crashes. Many of the crashes are caused by vehicles slowing or braking at entry and exit points to I-75, resulting in rear-end collisions. In addition, a high number of incidents are also caused by sudden weaving or merging maneuvers, resulting in sideswipes. Improvements in the near term are also needed to address reliability opportunities related to seasonal traffic, special events, and weather. Unlike other similar interstate facilities, I-75 often experiences heavy congestion on the weekends and can experience major delays around spring break, summer holidays, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. Traffic during these times can be almost double that of a typical day. Improvements in the long term will also be needed to improve capacity and address growth in population, visitor traffic, and freight activity. By 2050, Florida's population is projected to increase by an additional 27%, adding as many as 600 people per day. Marion County's projected population is also expected to grow by 27%, and Sumter County is expected to increase by an additional 72%. Florida's continued growth in the tourism industry will continue to be a contributing factor to traffic in the area. The state saw 122 million visitors in 2021, and over half of these visitors arrived by automobile. Roughly 15% of all Florida visitors traveling by automobile use I-75 to reach their destination. I-75 is also a critical route for the movement of freight, with at least 20% of all trips made by trucks. As the region surrounding the I-75 corridor continues to grow, the demand for goods will rise, which will contribute to a higher number of trucks using I-75 and connecting roadways. To address the transportation needs, FDOT is conducting PD&E studies for the recommended near-term improvements identified in the I-75 Interstate Master Plan. 
The recommended near-term improvements under the study include the addition of auxiliary lanes from south of State Road 44 in Sumter County to State Road 326 in Marion County, a distance of approximately 30 miles. In addition, interchange improvements at State Road 40 and State Road 326 in Marion County are also under evaluation. Adding auxiliary lanes will involve the construction of an additional lane between interchanges along I-75. The lane would be added to the outside of the existing travel lanes, yet still within the existing I-75 right-of-way, and would require the reconstruction of the outside shoulder. An auxiliary lane is an extra lane connecting the on and off ramps between two consecutive interchanges. The additional lane allows drivers wanting to merge onto the interstate a longer distance to do so and helps reduce bottlenecks caused by drivers attempting to enter or exit the interstate. Auxiliary lanes decrease conflicts, improve safety, and ultimately allow the existing lanes to work more efficiently. Preliminary traffic studies indicate the proposed auxiliary lanes could reduce travel delays by 96% in the northbound direction and 88% in the southbound direction. Overall, the auxiliary lanes are expected to address safety needs, eliminate congestion choke points, and enhance access to local communities. The proposed improvements are also expected to enhance the supply chain by improving the timely delivery of goods. Adding auxiliary lanes will require several bridge overpasses to either be widened or replaced to accommodate the widening of I-75. Overpass bridge widening will occur at State Road 44 and Southwest 20th Street, and overpass bridge replacement will occur at County Road 462, County Road 475, Southwest 66th Street, and Northwest 63rd Street. Near-term operational improvements are also proposed for the State Road 326 and State Road 40 interchanges. The I-75 at State Road 326 interchange is heavily used by trucks, contributing to multiple failing intersections. Several modifications are proposed for this interchange. The biggest change will occur for passenger vehicles traveling westbound on State Road 326 and turning left to travel south on I-75. The interchange's new design, referred to as a displaced left turn, will allow more vehicles to make the left turn toward I-75 southbound, while also allowing traffic traveling eastbound on State Road 326 to move through the intersection at the same time. Only tractor trailers will continue to use the existing loop ramp to enter I-75 south, relocating an existing signal to the east, in addition to multiple other on- and off-ramp improvements, will improve the traffic operations at the State Road 326 interchange. Modifications to I-75 at the State Road 40 interchange are also proposed. In the past five years, the State Road 40 interchange has experienced more crashes than any other intersecting roadway in this I-75 study area. Improvements to this interchange include adding dual left turn lanes and improved right turn lanes at the I-75 off-ramps to State Road 40 to reduce the chances for backup onto I-75. Additional space for the I-75 ramp approaches to reduce backups on State Road 40 and crosswalks to provide for continuous sidewalks throughout the State Road 40 corridor. These modifications will improve pedestrian safety, reduce the number of crashes, and improve the overall traffic operations to and from the State Road 40 interchange. Construction of the auxiliary lanes and interchange improvements will be within the existing I-75 right-of-way. However, additional land near the interstate will be needed to construct ponds to hold stormwater that drains from the roadway. Alternatives for stormwater ponds are currently under evaluation and are available for review. The PD&E and design phases of project development are occurring concurrently for the auxiliary lane and interchange improvements. With the help of the Governor's Moving Florida Forward initiative, a historic investment in our state's infrastructure, FDOT is expected to start construction of the I-75 improvements from south of State Road 44 to State Road 326 in spring 2025. Your input is critical to the success of this project. Comments and input received throughout the studies will be used to refine the alternatives and recommendations. 
There are multiple ways for you to participate. All public comments and questions are part of the public meeting record, and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by December 24, 2023, 10 days after the public meeting, will become part of the project's public meeting record. All questions will be responded to in writing following the meeting. In-person attendees are encouraged to speak with project team members to ask questions and provide input. To submit a comment for the public meeting record, please complete a printed comment form and return it to project staff. To submit a comment or question online, please type the comment or question in the question box on the GoToWebinar control panel. Written comments may also be submitted on the project websites at cflroads.com. You may also contact FDOT project managers to provide your comments during normal business hours. For the North segment, please contact David Graber by email at david.graber at dot.state.fl.us. That's D-A-V-I-D dot G-R-A-E-B-E-R -E -E at D-O-T dot S-T-A-T-E dot F-L dot U-S. Or by phone at 386-943-5392. For the South segment, please contact Stephen Browning by email at stephen.browning at dot.state.fl.us. That's S-T-E-P-H-E-N dot B-R-O-W-N-I-N-G at dot.state.fl.us or by phone at 386-943-5422. You may also contact them by U.S. Mail at the Florida Department of Transportation, 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 501, Deland, Florida, 32720-6834. The contact information is also available on the public meeting notification that you may have received by mail. To learn more about the project, go to www.cflroads.com. Type the project numbers 452074-1 or 452074-2 in the search box at the top right and click Go. Then click on the respective project name. Public meeting materials are posted on the website now. On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, thank you for attending this public meeting and providing your input on these projects. If you have comments or questions after the meeting, please submit them by December 24, 2023. Have a good evening. This concludes the presentation. We invite you to view the meeting materials and exhibits and speak with the project team.